Hey, hey everybody, welcome on into ClayShare Live. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and we're here at the ClayShare studio. We've got a really fun tutorial planned for you. I'm gonna show you how to make two plates two different ways. We're gonna make one plate using a pottery wheel, but wait, we're not throwing, we're hand building, but we're doing it with a wheel. And these are for folks who have a wheel already. You don't need a wheel to make a plate, and I will show you how to do that second. So this plate right here, is the one that I'm gonna show you how we hand build. And we'll get over on, on camera two here so the folks can see everything up close and personal like in detail because it's much better on, on the close up. Yeah, so we'll get that going. So this is the one I did hand building. Maybe we'll be on camera two, I don't know. I can't tell, I don't have a, I don't have a monitor showing me so I don't know what's happening. <laughs> All right, so we've got that. That's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to be using the new WA2 GR pottery form system. And this is made to be used with slabs of clay. It's a really great system. Now, Jeff at GR Pottery Forms had the WA1 that came out a few years ago, and that's a really nice one as well. But he updated it, and he's got a few changes. Um, the main change that I noticed is that it's a two pin key. So this right here means you won't have that slipping. If you've ever put this on your wheel and the form spun with the wah one, well, now it's not gonna spin, it's locked in. So it has this D shape, so that's one of it. It, it will still work with the older forms, but with the new forms that he's got, these are the RD2 forms, or R2D2 forms. There's going to be so many Star Wars references now. Um, these right here have this lovely slope. It's about a two inch slope on this. So it's a different form and I have them in a 12 inch and I have them in a nine inch. So we're going to make one of each, a 12 inch plate and a nine inch plate. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the 12 inch plate. You just got the new Watu system and your two clay share rolling pins. <gasps> You're going to have a lot of fun. So you wanna see if they're gonna make deeper, if they can be stacked. Um, so these, my understanding is they do not stack, no. So the folks out there who are asking, I'm gonna show you why they can't be stacked. Do you see right here, I mean, can you stack it? Well, you, yeah, I'm stacking it, so you could stack it. The problem is you're gonna have a bump, right? So I don't know, is that bad? Is it bad? Mm -hmm. I don't know, we'll have to make one one of these days, but. Not tonight, tonight we're gonna to do something different. All right, so I'm just gonna set my forms off to the side. These forms uh, will work with the older WA system and you can also use the older WA pieces on this system. And Jeff's got a sale. Uh, you know, we have a, always have a discount on things not on sale. GR Pottery Forms and ClayShare have a little deal going. But Jeff already has this system on sale. You can get it as a kit or you can get just the forms. So you gotta check that out over at grpotteryforms.com. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and start with the first one we're going to do, and that's the 12 inch. And I've got some clay I rolled out a little earlier today, right here. And I just want to catch everybody up on this. We were going to be doing a tutorial with Drew from Clayscapes, but Drew has a, a sick little one and has to be um, taking care of his daughter, so he couldn't make it. So we're doing this tonight and uh, we'll get Drew in to share his glaze results from last week another time. So he, the, the good thing about pots is once they're glazed, they don't go bad. They're always fresh. So um, we're sad that Drew can't be with us, but you know, Clay Share is all about family and he needed to take the time to take care of his family, right? We wouldn't want it any other way. Okay, so here I've got a big slab of clay. This is B-Mix 5. It's a mid-range smooth clay and I rolled it out to about a quarter of an inch thick. So it's, it's a pretty thick piece of clay. That's gonna, that's gonna make a nice sturdy plate. Now you can go thinner if you want with your plates, but as you go thinner, you tend to get more warping issues. Plus, I like a plate that's gonna be around. You know, thin little plates can break easy and then you end up with chipped edges and things. So we're just gonna take and smooth the edges since this was we're gonna smooth the front and back since this was rolled out with a slab roller. Now I'm using one of Jeff's little round work boards here. 
I believe they are a 14 inch diameter, but I'll measure it in a second for you guys so you know it. The stacked forms, so Katie has an interesting suggestion for the stacked forms. She says she thinks it would make an interesting pasta bowl. I do think she's right. I think that would make an interesting pasta bowl as well. And after you adjust that, flip the viewfinder down for me because I can't see. There we go. Thank you, cameraman. <laughs> All right. So I've smoothed this out, and you can see I've got a lot of uh, excess clay, which we're just going to, using the board, we're just going to cut out a circle. There we go. And then this clay here can get wedged up and reused and made into another plate. All right, what I love about this board here, and I said I was going to measure, and I, I was betting it was 14 inches across. Once, oh, 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 no, no. It's, it's, it's 15. It's bigger. It's 15 inches. So the great thing about doing a slab 15 inches, you know it's definitely going to fit these big 12 inch and account for the grape and the drape, and we're going to have plenty of excess. Right, so we'll be good to go with that. Now, I'm gonna do something. I think you all gotta brace yourselves for a second. <laughs> or I'm not gonna do something, actually. Some of you are probably following me. I'm not gonna put any texture on this. You know, I have plenty of things I could texture this with, but we're not going to, but you can. You absolutely 100% could roll texture, stamp texture, press texture, whatever you want into the surface, but I'm not going to because I'm going to be different tonight. <laughs> I'm going to do it my way. All right. So the system has these little bat pin holes in the bottom of it so that it will fit various sizes of wheels. So you don't just have to have a 9 inch on center if you have a 10 inch or a, or a 8. I believe it'll work. And I'm not sure how it'll be for centering. Might be a little trickier. I'm going to pull my wheel over. This is my little Artista. And I, I love this baby wheel. I say baby, but this little guy is a workhorse. This wheel could throw 25 pounds of clay. Like you could center 25 pounds of clay on this if you so desired, which is amazing. And I might have to take my splash pan off to fit with the Artista. I think I do. So I was all working earlier on my... Bailey, and I don't have to take the splash pan off to work on my Bailey with the wah, but for, for this I do. So I should have prepared better. Sorry, i got to fiddle with this for a minute. So I have my big wheel. My big wheel. <laughs> That's so funny. My bigger wheel is one that you don't take the splash pan off. I need someone to hold this so that I can wiggle it off. There we go. I thought I had to get my assistant involved, but no. All right, we're not going to be using that part tonight. See, it's actually pretty easy to take apart when you don't do it on camera. So now we're going to line up our bat pins. No texture. Who is this woman? And what have you done with Jessica? Right? Where did she go? What has happened? All right, so you get this on, and then you fit your little key in here. Now, if you want to see more with the system, Jeff from JR Pottery Forms has some great tutorials on his website, so you can check that out. Um, also on his YouTube, so definitely check that out. It's kind of weird with my head cut off, isn't it? Oh my goodness, no texture. I'm having a texture attack. <laughs> yes, please. It's okay, folks. It's going to be okay. All right. So now you take your, see I, the, all the talk of no texture. Take your work board and you're going to put the form. So if you put your texture on it, that's great. You're going to put your form on it. Then you can take out your little D. Hold on, I bumped this. Take your little D form, 
right? And then you put it on. So you put your D on first. Make sure you got it on there right. Then take this. I feel like that's not, hold on. Gotta go the other way. Put it in the middle. The good thing about a circle is you can't mess that up. The D, uh, we're all gonna have to be facing the right way. The slot should be matched to the bat pin first. Oh, the slot first, huh? So I do, I learned pin first, but I'm going to do what you said, Frank. I'm going to do the slot first. So we flip it all over. We sit it on the wheel. See the slot is this thing right here. So you get down here and you line your slot up, slots in, slotted, it's, and then the pin falls in. Now we just pull off the workboard. So we don't need this. For a minute, we don't need it. We will need it in a little while, but not quite yet. I got a new foot pedal from Speedball. So watch out, folks. I can drive. Woo! Watch out. It's a brand new foot pedal. I just warn you guys that I've not used it yet, so I might go way fast. Right? So you should start kind of pulling it towards, get used to the foot pedal. <laughs> First time with a brand new foot pedal. And do I do a live broadcast? Yes, I do. So I'm just gonna use my sponge, kinda go along the edge, and then back in towards the form. And then on the top, towards the center. I'm really just compressing the clay a little bit, pressing it into the form, but I'm not trying to crush it in there. There's, there's no need to do that. I'm not trying to thin the clay or um, warp it or anything. We're just seating it on there. And then I'm just gonna take this red rib and use that. And you could just use the red rib if you want. And we'll go down the side. And there we have, here's our edge right here. Let's see if I can go slow, nope. Watch out, I have a speed problem. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut for our foot ring. So we know this is our edge right here where the side wall meets the foot right there. So I just made a little depression with my fingers just so I know where I have to slip and score. Slot first makes it easier. <laughs> So we just take and I just use a serrated rib and I let it just ride along here and it does the work for me. You know, I have to do all this, just little dashes and it slips and scores it because I already had my slip on my rib. So it was already wet. So that's already done. Now this is a big plate. I'm concerned about getting a little sagging. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna just make another foot ring. So it's gonna be a two foot ring plate which is what I usually do with big plates. And the great thing about the wheel is it makes it very, very easy to get that on. All right, so this is where we're gonna cut. We're just gonna use our needle tool and I'm just gonna go straight down. And we're just gonna go all the way around. That's our edge. Now I'm gonna cut another cut and that's gonna become my foot ring. And I'm using a needle tool, but you could use a clay knife if you want. Let me shut it off, peel away the excess clay. Then we make a little release cut. I'm gonna take this, flip it over. So this is the bottom right here. And I'm going to slip and score this, and then we'll just start attaching. And I'll go with the inner foot ring first. So I should need about that much clay. And 
and just line this up. Now if you like throwing feet on your pieces, you could take a coil and you could attach a coil and throw that on, which would be really cool because you could make a tall one. Can you stack them with the old forms? You're still going to get a funny angle, but we might be able to. I mean, we have got so many options for experimentation with this. So we got one on there. I am not going to turn the wheel on yet. I'm going to get all my foot rings on first, then I'll turn it on because I don't want to send, I don't want to send anything flying, which could happen. All right. Flip this over. And we'll just place this on that scored line. We're going to join here. We're going to slip and score these edges and then just kind of gently press them in towards each other. And then I'm going to just smooth it. And now we are going to compress slowly, slowly. So, uh, Jan, I'm actually going to do the hand building version next, so you have to hold on and see what happens. You're just going to have to wait, because that's happening next. Ooh, I'm singing. Um, in about a month, we will have uh, Thanksgiving here in the U.S., and the Wednesday before Thanksgiving is always a big fun day here in Clayshare land, because, yes, we have the 12 gifts for potters list that comes out that day, and not only does it come out, is I sing it to you to the tune of the 12 days of Christmas. You're welcome to listen to it muted with captions. But it's a tradition I have done for six years. Can you believe I've done it for six years? This will be the six 12 gifts for potters list that I have done. So if you need ideas and can't wait, you can go back and check any of the previous years gift ideas. I got to go faster than that. Okay, not that fast. How about? It is. I just got it. I haven't tuned it. So I'm going with it very fast too. I do have a speed issue when I throw. It is a problem I am addressing and working on to get better at slowing down. I'm compressing the outside a bit, compressing this inner seam here, just using my finger to do so. Then I'm going to bring back my red rib, compress this foot, and I am pinching the clay as I compress. I'm going to do the same here. And the great thing about this is you can check the heights of your two feet and make sure they're the same. If for some reason your inner foot or outer foot is a little shorter, you can always trim them a bit just with a needle tool and take it down. Or compress a bit more with your rib, and that'll take it down too. Now, if you have a lot of clay, you could always make it taller. So there we have our double foot plate. And one last thing I want to do is I decided to not have a big rim. This is going to end pretty much exactly where the form is. So I'm going to go in with my needle tool. 
find the edge of the form there and I'm just going to let the needle tool cut away and then trim and then peel this off so I have a nice even edge. Get that there. Taking the edge of my sponge. Go crazy fast. No, don't go fast. Just compress this. There. So now, I've got a great big plate. I didn't throw it at all. Check the outside if you have any areas that you need to compress and smooth. Do that. And then you're done. You're good to go. Boy, this, this little foot pedal I got to work on is going to go on us. All right, so there's the big one. Um, this has to set for a little while and dry because it is a bit... It is a bit wet, and if I pull it off right now, it will collapse, and we don't want that to happen. So I will set this to the side, turn this off so I don't actually step on, accidentally step on my pedal and unplug the pedal. And we're just going to slide this over here. Out of sight, but not out of mind. And now we're going to switch to the hand-built version. If we do not have texture on a piece, you need me to sing. It's hard to take no texture otherwise. <laughs> If there's no texture, Jess must sing. <laughs> I do love to sing. I, I, I am so off key all the time, but I don't care. I mean, I enjoy myself. All right, so we got, we're going to make the hand built version. And I've got my clay here. And to use the 9 inch, I just like to take the larger 12 inch form. And you could use any round thing you've got in your studio, a bat, anything, and use that as a template to just cut out. Now you could use rim templates. I know we're not doing that either tonight, crazy. Um, but you could just use rim templates and cut out your, your shapes from that and then your rim template gets draped. But we're doing it old school, not, not really. <laughs> Let's have a tune. Oh my gosh. Uh, you just have to wait for it to happen spontaneously for singing. All right, see how great that is? Lovely, lovely circle. Again, smoothing it out because it started out, there was a little bug, I'm sorry. It got, it got squished. It's not, it's permanently embedded in my plate happens. I found a spider squashed between a slab of clay this afternoon. He'd been there for a while. Hazards. <laughs> so the wheel I use was using was a Speedball Artista wheel. All right, so we've got our, oh, I got to grab my little key, don't I? So we've got our little piece ready to go and I have to get my key so let me just pop this up see how this will pop out so you only need one of the keys and then you remove the key from under your form I'm gonna just sit this back over here out of the way because you'll need this key actually I need that wait a minute I need this board what am I talking about I'm just gonna put this up on the other form then you can dry there. Just see me save it. All right, you need this. This was on impromptu. I just unboxed this this afternoon. No test run, nothing. Just was like, oh, I have to do a tutorial on this. All right. So we're going to put this here, just like that. Going to take our clay and we're just going to drape this. Now I see Jeff, he does often drape that way, where he just kind of uses it like a blanket and drapes it, which you certainly can. And then I'm going to do something which makes people say, is it really hand building if you use a banding wheel? Because it's a wheel. When I say there's no wheel involved and then there's a banding wheel, yes, it counts. Banding wheels are not pottery wheels just in case anybody wondered. <laughs> All right, 
So we've got our slab on here, and I'm just going to spin the board that it's sitting on. So do you need a pottery wheel? No. Do you need a banding wheel? It is one of my must-have tools for the studio. I really think everybody should have a good banding wheel. I think it's worth the investment to get one. They are not nearly as expensive as a wheel. If you're a hand builder, you will use it every time you make something. So we're just going to smooth this down the side with the red rib. Red rib is one of my must-haves too. I love these ribs. So there's the bottom. And then here's our edge. I'm just going to spin this along here. And now, where's our foot going to be? It's going to be here. And we don't need to make two because this isn't such a wide span. So we can just do one. One foot ring. But if you want to double up because you just like it, I'm not stopping you. Not at all. So you're going between a quarter inch and three eight, eight of an inch. So this is a three eighths of an inch slab, but we smooth it down a little bit so it is closer to a quarter of an inch. I do like a nice thick slab, but everybody makes their pottery different. I also probably will do some carving on these pieces. So for a carved form, I do want to have a little more meat to work with. All right, I'm going to cut. I'm going to find where the form ends, and I'm just going to cut. there, like that. And then we're going to do the same kind of foot ring we just did. We're just going to go in and just cut. A little more difficult to get a nice even foot ring when you do it on a banding wheel as opposed to a throwing wheel, but still completely doable. All right, switch it over. We'll fix the edge here after we put the foot ring on. All right, so we already slipped and scored the plate part. Let's slip and score the foot ring part. If you don't want to do it this way, you could take a strip of clay that you cut off and your foot maker, this right here, and pull it through, and you can make a foot with a foot maker. So that works fantastically as well. So let's put our foot ring on. Starting here, just like we did with the wheel thrown one, exactly the same. Line this up. I can see my foot got a little uneven in thickness. I'm just going to take my knife and just even that up, just like that. And after I get it on, if I decide I need to take a little more off, I will. All right. Now take our sponge. And just like we did on the wheel thrown version, I'm just going to push these guys towards each other a bit. All right. So now we're just going to spin, spin for a while. Banding wheels are the best. Total game changer for hand building. It really is. It really, really is. Um, you know, when I'm doing rims of hand built forms and feet of hand built forms, yeah, look, it's a little thick right here. So you get two options when that happens. You could tear the whole thing off and start over, which wouldn't hurt it, I promise. You, at this point, it's not on there forever. Or you could roll a little strip of clay out and thicken it up so that your foot ring is nice and even. So that's what I'll do. Especially when you're starting out, please don't let things like this keep you from making pots. It, it, and don't think that people have been making pottery for a while that you see posting stuff and everything looks perfect, that everything they make is perfect. It is not. They are only sharing their best with you. They're not showing you all the things that don't work. So don't be discouraged. 
keep working at it. You'll get there. So we just pinch this on, take my red rib, compress, now I'm going to smooth the outside of the join and the inside of the join. So there we have that part. Now I want to go ahead and just even up this cut I got on my rim right there. There we have it. And then taking my sponge, just wrapping the sponge around that edge. All right, so I said I wasn't going to put texture, but how can I not put some, I could put some texture. It, it would be wrong to not put texture on a pot, right? Somewhere, somehow, we've got to have some texture. All in favor of texture, raise your hands. Say aye. <laughs> uh, and I'll put some texture on. So I'm just using the back end of a wooden tool to go into that foot to compress that seam. And then it's done. It also creates a really nice decorative undercut. You just bought way too much glaze with Clayscape's birthday sale. Um, don't worry. We do test pieces. You know, do some test pieces. And with Clayscape's, I know, it's their 19th birthday. It's hard to imagine. All right, so it's a handmade plate, right? So if the foot ring isn't perfectly round, so what? It's a handmade plate. Now I've got something, I'm going to do a little decorative element to it. I've got this little leaf form right here from Michael Harbridge. And Michael, I'm sorry, I know you're not promoting your leaves. And Michael is going to be the sponsor for November with Learn Fired Arts. And um, I, I promise that I won't send people to buy the leaves tonight. <laughs> Don't go buy these leaves from Michael. Wait. <laughs> Just wait a little longer. He's not ready for you. Um, he might have some of these. These are the holly leaves, and I got the small set. And he has lots of other leaves, and he's getting more. I know he's just started. He just bought the company that makes the leaves. So it's a, um, it's a ramping up process for him. Okay, I'm taking the leaf. I dusted a little cornstarch on it because the clay is slightly tacky. I've got this little double-ended uh, pony roller. One end is just a straight roller and the other is slightly tapered. Use any end you want, but I do like to roll this in. And then I do press my edges. And then with my clay knife, we just pull out the end of this leaf and then peel it up. Beautiful, right? Look at that. Put a little more cornstarch on. Cornstarch won't hurt anything. Line up your leaf, I want a little bit of space, and roll it on. You could use clay stamps. You could, before you put your foot on, use a rolling pin and roll some texture on. I've done that in some tutorials in the past. So you can put texture on the outside. And the reason I love this is there's folks out there that want a solid, opaque glaze on the interior of their plate. And if you put texture on the inside and you put a heavy opaque glaze over your texture, it's not going to be seen, right? It's going to be hidden by that, that glaze. So this way, the outside is where you use your Georgie's Interactive Pigments and glaze on the outside. And then on the inside, you go ahead and use your beautiful glaze. So there's no compromising at all. You get to have it all. So look at that. If you wanted to do, see I'm going to not put cornstarch on. Let's see if it has enough left. Now this plate, I'll do eight. So four pairs of this particular design, but uh, depending on what you use, you might be able to do more. We'll do a, see it came off. We didn't need 
So cornstarch, brush a little coat of cornstarch every other pressing. How would you measure and apply texture? That would be on the front of the plate. You have trouble getting it centered. Well, with the form, because it locks it all in, if you drape it all and then flip it over together, you won't have any problems. It will be centered because of how these forms are made. Um, we'll do more with this if you guys want. I'll do more with this and we'll do some texture, you know, getting centered for texture. The great thing about this is if you wanted to do some decals, some underglaze decals, you can add that to the front. So all of you who've got some beautiful holiday decals, uh, snowy winter scenes, or maybe you got holly leaves or something on there that you want to put on it. And this technique doesn't have to be these leaves. You could put maple leaves in here. You could put any leaf. I mean, you could go with a bigger plate and then you could do a bigger, a bigger leaf if you wanted to. You could actually put your leaf on before your foot ring if you were going to do the whole form. And it could be giant, right? So you could do an enormous, enormous leaf on here. You can use real leaves, absolutely, positively. Here in Vermont, that's getting to be a hard thing because we have no leaves on the trees. It's stick season now. The leaves have left us until uh, end of April, beginning of May, the leaves will come back here. So I really don't have many options for leaves. There's a few on the ground I could get, but there's not many. Those of you who live in climates that have leaves all the time, I'm so jealous. You can just walk outside and get a leaf. All right, so I peeled that off. And then for my berries, since I went with a holly leaf, um, I have this little tiny quarter inch dowel. And just make a dot, dot, dot. I like three. And I put it at the base. One dot. And so we just put that all the way around. You practice your spacing how you want it. But look at that. That's kind of fancy looking, right? I think it's a little fancy. Just a little fancy. All right, so this we're gonna set to the side. You gotta let it dry. It's not ready to flip out, but I do have one I made a little earlier. And I'm not sure if it's quite ready, but we're gonna test it, all right? So you wanna make sure that it's not tacky anymore. And then I'm going to grab another board to flip it onto. If it starts to sag, I'm just going to flip it back over. So this has the same leaf motif that we had before, that we just did. I usually let mine sit on the form overnight and then flip it out. When leaves have gone, you call the Blair Witch Project, the Blair Witch Project season in Michigan. We call it a very fancy name. We call it stick season. Stick. Just sticks, because that's all there is is sticks. So we have just a simple plate, and I'm going to go ahead and smooth out the rim right here. Compress and just smooth that out. And if I had put a texture on here, you would have seen texture, but I didn't. I did just a regular plate. So there, just the plain old, plain old plate. But then, the, the, I can't flip it over, fancy stuff's on the bottom. But you saw, and here it is. And this is the nine inch form that I used for the smaller plate. And then the other one's the 12 inch. And that's this one over here that is drying. This one's a little wetter. So this one will set up and then tomorrow I'll flip them off. And I'll share the flipping off with you all. I don't know, how else do I say that? Huh, that would be offensive. <laughs> what did I use for the berry dots? You looked away and you missed it. See what you miss? Uh, I used a fancy thing. It's a one quarter inch dowel that I cut. Just a little wooden dowel. You could use the handle of a foam brush. You could use the back end of a needle tool. So many things. Whatever you got, it'll work. All right, uh, so 
saw a book in the background. What book is it? Oh yes, well that is Sunshine Cobbs, brand new. I will share it. Beginner's Guide to Hand Building, Functional Sculptural Projects for the Home Potter, which I wrote the foreword for. So get this if you don't have it. I bought an extra copy so I could give it away. So I'll be giving away one of these Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So in the broadcast where you get to hear me sing, I'm also giving one of these away. So that's going to be an exciting night. I wonder if this book will be on my list of gifts for potters. Yeah, it totally is. It's completely going to be on there. All right, so that's what we have for tonight's live broadcast. And this is the free broadcast we bring to the world for everybody. But, you know, part of one of the awesome things we do for our premium members of ClayShare, and you all know who you are, is we do a second broadcast, which is private just for them. So in addition to our hundreds of full-length classes, thousands of videos we got for the premium members, I also do a private broadcast. And in that tutorial, we are gonna be making our own marbled clay and using it not just on the wheel, but also using it as a slab. And I'm gonna show you two different things you can make with it. So if you've ever wanted to learn how to make marbled clay, who doesn't wanna know how to make marbled clay? Come join me because at 6.15 p.m. Eastern time, I'm gonna be making marbled clay. Okay, woo! All right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out and being here with me. Check out Jeff's Wa, and remember, it's Clayscapes Pottery's 19th anniversary, so they get a 19% automatic discount on all their glazes. Check them out. They're really a great, a really great family-run company. I'm sad Drew couldn't be with us tonight. I hope his daughter, Molly, hey Molly, I hope you're feeling better honey. Um, and Drew will join us again soon. Next week we have Michael Harbridge joining us because we're starting November and he's going to be November sponsor. So we have some exciting things coming to you next week. We also have two new things debuting on ClayShare. Um, super exciting stuff and I will share more information about that as we get closer to next week because it's only Wednesday. We've still got so many days until we get to next week. All right everyone, take care.